you have returned to another edition of my Thought Brain Diary Hole, better known as the Wallong. Hi, how are you? Whether you are listening on patreon.com slash m3 podcast as this is after this has been taped, or if you're listening live on twitch.tv slash Wolski Live. I appreciate you either way. I appreciate people like Lawman in here straight up throwing his money down in the Twitch on the Twitch side, being a pr- uh, purple premium boy. I'm thinking of we're gonna like divide because again anybody who gives this you know conglomeration money they're a premium boy um but the the twitch side needs their own variation so i'm thinking where you're like you guys are purple premium you know twitch is purple premium so people like lawman shaman malik you're purple premium people like nick smitty who have uh you know doubled their efforts at times and been you know double premium boys i mean you can subscribe on both we're not going to keep you from doing that but hey a minute of plugs that's all. That's all you. That's all you're gonna get from me. I'm a, I'm a benevolent, nice, kind man, um, and I want you to enjoy yourself here, and I want to enjoy myself here. So let's let's begin with with today's with, it, with blah, 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 blah. let's begin with today's uh, topic. And for quick, yes, lawman, I will acknowledge that. Uh, true, I'll just yank that money from your wallet, and you'll throw it at me. That's the goal. You're gonna, that's what we're trying to accomplish here at M3. But we're trying to earn it. We're not. We're trying to take. We are trying to take it from you forcibly. We but with the force of good content. We want that content to reach into your wallet, kind of push you down a little bit, and be like, "We're taking your money," but you don't want it back because you you know if you want it back, the content you know, he'll show back up. Uh, he'll slide the money back into your front pocket, but he'll really like he'll give you a, a nice like long stare down as he does it. And, it won't be fun for anyone. Long story short, uh, you know, subscribe to the Patreon. I'd really like that. I'm going to take a sip of water. Let's talk about sports. Sports ball. Sports things. Sports man. Okay. So I love sports. I've made it no secret. Um, I have been an athlete in my life. I'm not an athlete anymore. I'd like to be again. I'd like to be more athletic. I'm trying to be more active. Uh, but sports and athletics have always been such a huge part of my life in, in some capacity. Um, whether it be playing it, coaching it, watching it, being involved in producing content about it, and you're kind of watching it right now, like, you know, it never stops. Um, but it kind of started with me, the first sport I could remember really liking was football. I am a New York Giants fan. My, my entire family hails from the New Jersey area, uh, many generations deep in that and my family was actually the first you know like my my dad was the first i guess in a few generations um from to to move i mean you know his grandmother was a a scottish immigrant but you know his father you know there was roots in new jersey for many generations and we were the first ones to move somewhere else to be in maryland but that love of the new york giants who for those who don't know new york giants do play in new jersey they're new jersey's team they are subject to new jersey's lockdown rules so it's very convenient to be in new jersey uh, property when you want to put fans in your stands, but be New York when you you know you want to appeal to the to the mainstream. But hey, I'm still a fan, not complaining. Um, but I the the fandom never left because my dad was a very passionate football fan. My grandfather was a very passionate football fan. My mom was a passionate football fan. Her parents are passionate football fans. All Giants fans, love of the Giants across the board, three or four generations deep from both sides of the family came down upon me and my brother's shoulders and we were happy to bear the load and then pass it down to ours you know what i'm doing right now and i have success with it my son does cheer for the giants um and i'm sure when my brother has children he'll be even more strict about cheering for the giants he will not play that shit i would have no issue if tucker was like hey you know i kind of want to be a washington fan or baltimore fan I'm like all right well that sucks but all right i understand uh my brother would not have that shit it would be it would be dealt with <laughs> swiftly, uh, but it just was it. And then I I can remember some of my earliest memories even are watching sports. I can remember watching sports a game with my dad. I remember specifically this one. I do I would do it a lot, but like the one that sticks in my mind is I'd always dress up like a Giants player, 
uh, my little toy giants, like the full thing, the pants, the, the jersey, some shoulder pads, a helmet, a football, and everything. And I would be watching a game with my dad. And I would, I remember this specific game was the Cardinals versus the Giants, because the Arizona Cardinals used to be in the Giants division back in the day. It was weird. Uh, but I remember just asking him, like, hey, tell me when they say hut. And tell me when they say hike. And I would wait, and then I would act out the play as they did it. Whole game. The entire fucking football game. Football games are three hours, man. <laughs> it, was a little, it was a little halftime break, you know. I mean, depending on, it can shift up and down a little bit, but games are typically about three hours long. So, I, I you could tell it, it just ran deep. It runs into the happiest moments of my childhood, which is serious. That's where a lot of your favorite things come from. The happiest moments of your childhood. Those moments that like really meant something that f- formed you. I don't know. I mean, that's kind of what childhood is about, you know? Like it's about these these weird experiences that give you this primitive grip on humanity and what it's going to be and mean to you. Um, and if, if sports are something that's, you look around you and you see people yelling and screaming and you're like, my God, like your brain automatically is going to assign it and deem it important. Uh, even now in like, you know, my adult years, as you become more active and you be, you know, in your community or at least pretending to be a mayor, um, or you become more active, I guess, politically in voicing your opinion, uh, no matter what that be, uh, some of these things like sports, which some people I've even heard say like, oh, we should defund sports or whatever. Like, you know, we shouldn't let the, like, I still can't take that. Like, I won't hear that, you know, because, uh, and you know, selfishly sometimes. I remember when the lockdowns happened, they're talking about doing the bubbles with sports. I was all for it. I think sports are essential, uh, but that's my opinion. You know what I mean? Like, are they essential to sustain life? Well, absolutely not. But I mean, are they essential to sustain society? Again, not really, but what kind of society do you want to live in that doesn't have fucking sports, man? <laughs> like, it's not fun. Like, they ban sports. That suck, you know? <laughs> that wouldn't make a whole lot of sense. That would seem a little authoritarian. Um, is that a society? Is that free? You know, like, that's just, that's where my brain would go on that. And I also have to acknowledge that that's a personal, that's personal prejudice uh against not against not against something it's a weird word to use but it is that that's i guess like um, my opinion on that is prejudiced as a pair as compared to like i don't know something i don't care about as much like fashion you know you could say i'm prejudiced against fashion because if somebody said oh you know we can't afford these fucking fashion shows anymore i wouldn't shed a tear but there's probably a bunch of people who are like it's important it's it's culture you know it makes sense like when i see the girls come out where the guys come out and the stuff that looks like trash bags or like human parachutes or shit from the fifth element. I don't, I don't get it, but it has to hold some sort of significance because it keeps happening and people keep going to it, spending a lot of money on it. And you know what? I, I, I act the same way. <laughs> those like fashion shows or toward the, or towards them. I don't necessarily attend them regularly, but I would act the same way at one of those shows that like maybe my wife would at a football game. You know, because she's not into it all. She doesn't get it. But to me, football makes sense. Everything about it makes sense. The the rules of the game, the code of the game, the unwritten rules, the written rules, the formations. I, I played it. I did. I, I lived it. Like, and there's people who eat. You don't even have to play it. You just, you get it like that when you watch it enough, when it becomes that much of a part of your life. And again, it's like fashion shows. Football, football is fashion shows. They, they. That logic has to carry on over then. Those people who do those fashion shows, they have to understand something you don't. Just like when I'm watching a football game with my wife, I understand a lot of things that she doesn't at that time. That three hours that I'm sometimes able to force her (laughs) to sit down and watch a Giants game with me. I'm seeing things and hearing things in a different way. Um, And it's just, you know, I don't know, general thoughts. General thoughts of like, that's really football for you. Like my, my fandom of the New York Giants is more than just liking a team. And it's nothing even to do with geographic location. I love New Jersey, but it's not my home. Maryland is my home. Uh, it's, I don't, I, I have family there, but like, I don't really identify. There's no, like, I don't pull in there and go, ah, home. And I know where I am and can drive without a fucking GPS. Like I can do that here in Maryland. I can do that in my state. 
Um, Ari, hey buddy, get it here. We're doing we're doing a nice long nice long chat here, Ari, and I got some. Uh, we're gonna get the, our cool little project sent. I'm gonna, we're gonna be dropping hints about that soon. Uh, but thank you for thank you for hopping in. It's always good to see you. Uh, but anyway. Uh, I, I did need to kind of change the subject anyways to kind of move forward. But yeah, you can see. Like, you can see it, it's deeply ingrained in who I am. And it was really just the Giants. Um, it was the Mets, too. I like baseball. Man, everybody likes baseball. Baseball, to me, though, is... I I can't... <sighs> trying to. I was thinking about how I was going to word this the other day. Because I knew this was going to end up being something I wanted to talk about. Let me take a sip of water. Maybe collect my thoughts. Do a little dance. I think why I feel like I can enjoy football so much more is because every game, every time I assemble to watch a game of football, the stakes are incredibly high. And I just scooted myself down a little bit. This is much more comfortable with my microphone. <laughs> I just did a weird little scoot. Uh, but the uh, the stakes in a NFL American football game each week are incredibly high. The outcome of a team season, the outcome of like some people's moods for days and weeks, you know, justified or not, uh, rides on a game. Um. It, 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 everything can change, we, you know, by one result. Because there's only 16 of them. Now 17. Uh, used to be 14. You know, like, those those games matter so much because one team going on a run and you falling behind just, just two weeks, you know, if a, if a team that was a game behind you wins three in a row and you lose two in a row, you know what I mean? Like you, you find yourself behind, like it's just, it can happen just like that in a couple of weeks. Um, and you always find yourself in those last couple weeks of the season, just like, well, shit, we're a couple of games away. Like there's always, there's always some drama. Uh, oh, wait, there's really in any sport, obviously you find that, but very, very seldom is it, is it one game, one game. You know, separating separating teams like this. Uh, something like baseball, I like watching in a vacuum. I, I like baseball games. I like going to them. I like going to the ballpark. I like uh, sitting up there with a beer and a hot dog and a pretzel and taking in a usually pretty lengthy <clears throat> nine-inning baseball game where you don't have to be invested every single second. <clears throat> you know, the action is spaced out by at-bats. Um you, but you're able to know what's oh you always know what's happening. You can always you can always look at the field, look at the scoreboard, know what's happening. Take a break, uh, have a beer, maybe wake your dog up from having a, a a nightmare. And I don't mean to throw Penny, Millie, Millie, you're having a nightmare. <laughs> you're having a nightmare, you big goofball. Oh, you're so funny. Um, but you can you can enjoy the people around you, you can enjoy the environment, and then you can pop in and catch the at-bat. Watch each pitch. There's nice amble breaks. Ample breaks. I don't know. I fucking use words wrong all the time. But there's just nice space to breathe all the time. And people will even complain in American football that there's like, you know, there's a whistle after each play. And in my mind, that's like the, you know, one of the most fast, you know, pace field games that I, I watch. Not counting ice hockey, which is just it, it, I love hockey, but that's just blink if you miss it. You kind of just I like being there, and you just listen for the buzzer to go off, and then watch the replay. I mean, that's how I felt hockey. But I'll, I'll get to hockey in a little bit because hockey I, I got into a lot later. Um, but another thing that is appealing though about baseball is to me. So with all those games, with 162 games, obviously it's because. You know, you can like. There's a lot of money to be made in baseball sales, and baseball is a sport that the body can handle 162 games at the same level that a football player's body can handle 16 games. Like, there's, I feel like there's similar levels of strain. Like, they're they're both equal levels of athletes in terms of you know football players getting the shit pummeled out of them for the the short span of time that they're in there, and the baseball player is just that absolute every fucking day wear and tear, like never stopping. Um, 
that all kind of equates to the same level of fucked up uh, at the end of a season and at the end of a career. Uh, but when you go to a ballpark, right, let's say you, you're a fan of the New York Mets, okay, and they're, I don't know, 20 and 40, right? At this point, okay, barring barring a real turnaround and a real miracle, we're barely like through the summer or even into the summer yet. We're done. You know, you can almost write this whole season off. There's only 30 teams. It used to be a lot more exclusive, but it used to be fucking, you know, 30 teams. Out of those 30 teams, only eight made the postseason, you know. So you the, the chances were already super slim of you making the postseason. You already, what, 40 games below 500, 20 games below 500. Like, it's probably done for you. And let's just say you're going up against the Washington Nationals who are fucking like 50 and 10. Just killing it. Just absolute favorites to win fucking everything. Well, this particular day, at this particular ballpark, the Mets pull it out, man, and you're there for it. Mets win three to two at a fucking nail biter where they play their asses off and the the you know, the the bull the bullpen shows up to play and you know, like the starting pitcher pitches a no hitter through six and then finally gives up something. You know, it's like it's really exciting. But at the end of the day, your team pulls it out. It's fucking awesome. You're going to celebrate. It means something. They got a big win. They're not going to do anything that season. They're not going to, you know, you're not going to be host, hoisting postseason gold, gold, whatever. Excuse me. Burp count. Uh, you, you know, you're not going to, you're not a champion or anything. But in that moment, in that vacuum of time, you fucking won. It was a victory. And it's a long investment. Because if you go to the ballpark, you're there for three hours. So when you invested three hours of your time into this game. With the team that you were supporting, they fucking they won it, they won it, and you get to go home really happy and satisfied, and that's what I feel like you can get out of baseball on a really consistent basis. You can go a couple times, of, <clears throat> excuse me, a couple times a summer. You can go dozens of times. You can go to your mi- local minor league park because there's so much baseball being played all over the place, all over the country. If you want to go see a professional baseball game, you'll you probably have a professional baseball team at some level near you. And whether it's single A or pro, watching a single A and a pro game, there's not that much difference. There, There is, obviously. But, like, I have a double A ballpark 30 minutes from my house. And I also have a pro, a pro park about 30 minutes from my house. But that double A park used to be about 10 minutes from where I grew up. We'd go to that double A park all the time. And we'd watch guys come in and out. They would be guys coming in and out of the majors, you know what I mean? And just really skilled players. It was awesome. The Bowie Bay Sox, they were they they still are called. And for the longest time, and I think still now, like they, they sucked. They I would always go look, they'd have the standings posted. Um, and they'd be like dead last all the time. But I didn't give a shit. Like it was cool when we'd go there and they'd win. They pull one out. Someone would hit a home run. It's a, it's a spectacle. So baseball is such it's much more of a spectacle sport than people give it credit for. It really is. Home runs are awesome to watch. You don't no, until you've if you've never seen somebody if you've never seen a pro ball player legitimately hit a home run out of a ballpark in a baseball game, like you haven't lived, man. It's it's one of the most incredible plays in sports. It's just incredible. It seems so simple, and it is. But sometimes the most you know sometimes simple is just is just the best. Um, you know, diving catches, a pitcher throwing a no hitter, or a perfect game. There's just a lot to be shown in a baseball game. There's a lot of I guess that's spectacle that isn't talked about as much. But that's, that's you know, I don't know, thoughts on football, baseball. You obviously could tell I'm a Mets fan. I played those a little bit. Um, and then comparing going to the games. You know, again, like going to a baseball game, it's much more relaxing. Football games are intense. Going to a live football game, especially, and I'm going to adjust my seat just a little bit more. I feel like gravity sitting in my balls here fuck is the is the hog cranker here it is there we go a little bit up also in a bathing suit which is not doing not doing favors for the for the old premium boys here all right <laughs> my premium baseball boys so uh, a bit a baseball game can be intense depending on if you go to a postseason game or not every football game is intense even ones that kind of don't matter and even for like teams that suck like Teams that suck with shitty fan bases, they'll turn out to be spoilers. They're also they will also turn out to 
like heckle their own team. It's pretty funny. Um, but an NFL stadium just has this energy, this really intense magnetic energy that you you almost whenever you go to a live game you enjoy that more i can remember going to a live game with a friend of mine it was a monday night football it was the giants my giants versus the washington at the time washington redskins now washington football team um and it was a monday night game that the washington team needed to win to get into the playoffs the giants weren't going to the playoffs but it would have been cool to be spoiler or something we were doing okay that season it was like the rg3 miracle season uh, and it, I, you know, the fans are cool. You know, uh, Washington fans were always pretty cool with the, uh, New York fans. They were actually probably one of the nicer fan bases I've ever encountered, encountered, excuse me. Uh, but I can just remember how much that game mattered, how crazy some of the plays were. I remember RG3 fumbled into a running back who caught it and ran it in for a touchdown. Uh, I, it was just that place came unglued and I had more fun, even though my team lost, I had more fun at that game than I had at any game I've ever been to in my entire life. Just was blown away that that much energy can be exuded by that many people who were so happy. And it had been so long since they had had a team that had success like that. And there was this sense of like just catharsis and there was relief and there was real genuine, like just unspoiled joy between these, these, these people. And this wasn't even, I don't know if this was the game that sealed him to the playoffs. It may have been. It may have been. I can't. Mm. God, let me see. I actually want to check that now. Because uh, that was a that was legit. I think it was like the 12 Washington. Uh, I think that was the year. And we're going to do this right now. Because we this is officially a sports podcast. Yeah, they went 10-6 and six that year. <clears throat> Lost in the wild card to the Seahawks. That sucked. I remember that when they lost and their boy got hurt. Um, that was rough. That was really rough. Oh, and they had a bunch of like amazing draft picks. Um, okay, so the schedule. Yeah, they won their uh, their last one, two, three, four, five, six, seven games in a row. And now this wasn't. A game that clinched him to the playoffs. So the game that I went to was at uh, FedEx Field, December the third, two thousand and twelve, and this was the game that got them over, well, got them up to five hundred. Essentially, what that means is they were five and six going into the game. This brought them to six and six, and it really like cemented the whole we're on the run to win this division thing. And I'm pretty sure the Giants were seven and five, and I'm pretty sure yeah, we we like fumbled and lost the division this year. Like we kind of collapsed. Pretty sure, yeah. We went nine and seven. And we collapsed. Um, <laughs> fuck it's good. Oh, you guys screwed us over. At least we beat the. At least we beat the uh, the Eagles at the end of the year. But uh, anyway, yeah, we lost seventeen to sixteen. They moved to six and six, and the kind of balance of power in the division shifted, and everyone there kind of felt it. They felt this run was was real. It was real. Um, that kind of energy, I feel like can't really be captured too spectacularly in a, uh, in a baseball setting outside of, you know, playoffs, stuff like that. We want to hockey. I'll tell you about hockey because I didn't get into hockey until my early twenties. I, as a kid, like the devils, I had family members who were into the devils and I was again, aligned with sort of the New Jersey mentality of sports teams but I moved again we moved my family moved to Maryland when I was like four or five years old I've been here my entire life like this is my home and there's obviously no Maryland hockey teams so as I started hanging out with with these groups of people that I really wanted to bond with um, obviously I can bond over sports easy I love sports just wasn't into hockey but this group of people that I hung out with actually Tyler who I, I do m3 with uh he was a giant Caps fan, you know what I mean? Like a really big, that's the only sport he's really into. And just, you know, his brother and all the people they hung out with, I was like, <clears throat> man, I don't want to root with the fucking Devils. I don't like the Devils. I haven't watched hockey in years. I stopped watching hockey after the 2004 lockout. Uh, I, I was like, okay, well, you know what? Fuck it. I like the Caps. I just like the Capitals. What is it, you know? What's anybody going to say? <laughs> I've been New York sports my entire life. 
<clears throat> I still am New York sports for the most part my entire life. Uh, but I just wanted to be a Caps fan. And it just felt like a right time. And I did it. And I've been a Caps fan ever since. I've There was a couple of seasons where I was really into it. Where I was a true enthusiast of the game and literally watched all 82 games. The year, and Tyler, if you're listening to this, and I'm going to take a sip of beer here because I'm about to remember some a very painful Capitals memory. Mm. Gotta love that sippy dead air. But I can remember a... The year that we got beaten in the conference semifinals, excuse me, by the Tampa Bay Lightning. We had them three to one. We were about to beat them in a double overtime game or whatever. We ended up losing it and lost the next game, lost the next game. Like it was over. Um, I watched, you know, if you remember that year, the year that I think we went to the cup maybe the next year or the year after that. But I remember watching all 82 games that year. I watched every single game on TV because I just was I was staying home with Tucker, my son, that year for the first time. Completely stay at home dad. He wasn't in daycare. He wasn't in anything. He was with me. And I watched every single hockey game. Michelle hated it. <laughs> she was miserable. But she I mean she you know, she wasn't that miserable, but like there would be times where she wanted to watch something. We had like the one TV. I'm like, nah, game's on. If I couldn't catch it on there, i listened to it on the radio or something. <coughs> burp count two. That burp is meant to wake you up if you're listening to the audio version. I need you woken up. You've just been slammed into the boards by Tom Wilson. You've just been assaulted. You've just been, your, your eyeballs popping out. And Tom Wilson's stepping on it with the back of his skate because he's a psychopath. And he needs to be stopped and removed from the game of hockey. I'm sorry. <laughs> Uh, no, hockey is just, it's something I adopted into my life and, uh, share with anybody who, you know, who wants to share in it with me, going to games with people is fun, but it's not something I can really push in as passionate a way as I can football, explain like the history of stuff. Cause I just don't have that history intertwined with me. Um, I can start learning now and that is totally possible, but it's just sports are one of those things where Watching it and living it live, you're going to have a much deeper connection and experience to it than if you go back and watch the old games and try to learn the history and stuff. You can learn as you can learn. That's fine, but you got to be there. Um, and that's why my Capitals memories, it's, you know, I don't relate to that pain that they felt in the 90s and stuff. I only know a Capitals team that was good. And, you know, that's the only kind of the hockey that I know. I know a team that's been in the playoffs and good. And I've not had to suffer. So I've appreciated that. But I like, which is now Capital One Center. It's one of my favorite places to see any kind of sport. It's just a great place to go see a game. Uh, if I can give any advice, if you want to go to a hockey game, pick a non-division, if you even go deeper, a non-conference opponent on a weeknight. You will save yourself so much money and still get your hockey fix. And you can thank me. You're, 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 look, the camera's over here. You're welcome. Uh, but that's, yeah, that, and that's it, though. You know, I, I, I like it. I like to play the games. I'm going to do a whole other vlog one of these other fucking days about sports games. I don't have a lot more to talk about because my love of sports games, my love of sports comes from my love of sports games first. Uh, I got into sports from sports games outside of football. So, uh, basketball i'll just be straight my brother loves it my brother played it used to love watching my brother play in high in, in uh, high school he went and played a bit of college uh, i didn't get to see him though because he was always so far away but never been my thing i like the knicks because uh, my brother likes the knicks and he convinced me to like the knicks and that's cool and they suck a lot so that that's a great prerequisite for me to like a team because liking teams that suck is like it's kind of like my mo <laughs> it is or teams that are good every now and again. So that's it. That's that's uh, that's basketball, man. I'll shoot around every, you know. I'll shoot a J into the trash can, a, a watered up ball of paper. But that's about it. Now, <laughs> the last sport I'll talk about, and then maybe, I don't know, maybe I'll fucking bullshit about my experiences playing sports, and I'll be done with this fucking sport. Sports vlog. Sports vlog. This is how I feel about sports. I'm Chet Chesapeake with the Sports Report. Drinking water on air. 
I don't know how reporters do it. Well, yeah, they probably don't drink beer while they do their broadcasts. Oh, well. Um, so, soccer, football, association football, for the unfamiliar. That is, uh, for people who aren't familiar, that's one of my favorite sports. Um, not more than football. Maybe not even as, like, it's maybe, it's, t- it's, a lot of those are tied for second. It's one of those, you know, tied for close second. One of the reasons I appreciate it so much is truly the world aspect. But the fact that there's so much of it to consume. One of my favorite things to do, especially right now during the pandemic, was look for other sports. I looked for other versions of football. But you had looked, you had the fan-controlled football league. You had the spring football league. You had the XFL before COVID, which I loved. I always love alternate American football leagues. I like more. I don't care if the competition is a little little lacking. As compared to the NFL, I just want to see football. I want to see pro-level players playing football on my TV, and I want to be able to go to games. I think it's kind of cool if it's smaller. Like, at, you know, watching the D.C. Defenders at Audi Field was fucking awesome. You felt really up close to it. And it was a great environment to watch a game. It was like 13, it was oh, like 15,000 people there when I was there, and then 13,000 the next week when I was there. Um, it was super, super cool. And it was, again, I, I compared it, it was very scrappy football. It was a bunch of dudes looking for a second chance. Um, <clears throat> but... That being said, uh, back to soccer, there's alternate football everywhere. It, it, none of it really is alternate. It's just each country, it's it's a top sport. It's at least a top three sport. I mean, when you think in the United States, we have the big four, kind of big five. MLS kicks around there. But, you know, you have hockey, uh, football, baseball, and I don't know, four. I just <laughs> spacing out. But uh, in other countries, soccer is in, almost always in their top three at least um each country has a league that's competitive all over the world there's a bunch of clubs there's a bunch of competitions there's country-wide competitions there's like intercontinental type competitions there's world competitions there's competitions between countries there's olympics you know like there's just so much of it to consume there's so much meaningful competition as well because again any competition is meaningful whether it's like you're trying to win your your the domestic competition which is you know like the mls which would be like you know the fucking dc united who i am a fan of that's the other other local sports team i like because they're you know fucking new york red bulls i don't give a shit uh but dc united i've always been a fan of since i've lived here since i was a kid i've always they used to play at rfk and i went there a couple of times uh but <clears throat> you know that winning the mls mean fucking means something winning the canadian premier league means something i mean maybe not as much as winning the english premier league which is the most competitive league in the world arguably but it still means something winning club level football and then that brings you up to sort of uh champion leagues level football you know in europe they have uefa and united in the <clears throat> was it americas north america they have uh, concafa whatever it is Essentially, the champions or the top teams from all the leagues in that region of the world, they compete in their own little season, own little tournament. And then you compete, and then it's like another tier. Then then that champion goes up. And then the national teams will compete in similar competitions. Like, it just keeps going up and up and up and up and up and building. There's more and more and more, and it becomes more and more and more important. And, like, the games, there's always so much stake uh, in each game. There's, in a lot of leagues across the world, promotion and relegation between leagues, which I think is so cool. Um, You know, burp count relegation. But a team can, you know, rise and fall through the ranks. I think that's dope as shit. I think it works. It's like the bottom, like fucking three. Yeah, the bottom three in the Premier League go down. And then the top, you know, they figure it out through like a playoff. The top two and the top, the that those three move up and go to the Premier League next year. That's fucking awesome. There's so much of that variety all around the world. And I'm not even talking about the sport at this point. It's just there's so much to watch and to be consumed and to follow and to keep following and to hold stakes in. And even if your team isn't one of the greatest, there's still some competitive level of them to play and for you to support and cheer for. I am an Everton fan in the Premier League. And the reason I cheer for Everton is because some, some fuck ass at Bleacher Report one time wrote, wrote that Everton was the New York Mets of their respective league because they're the other Liverpool team. So there's Liverpool, FC, and Everton. 
uh, and they're both in Liverpool. And someone's like, yeah, like they're like the Mets, and like they they can't even get, be the uh, the most popular team in their own city. And it's like, all right, fuck you guys. I'm gonna be an Everton fan forever. So that's just kind of how I feel about soccer. I don't even know what the fuck this turned into. It's a sports podcast. Sports gas. Sports vlog with Alex Walalski, king of the vlog. Um, and as as far as I'm concerned, that's really it's really it for sport. It's really it for sport of like how I feel about it uh, in terms of how I became a fan of it, why I enjoy it, why I consume it, and why I think it's important is because it's just a good distraction, man. I don't know. It's a good way to spend your time. I think it could be a constructive way to spend your time. I think it's better than spending your time doing other dumb shit, playing it, consuming it, talking about it, analyzing it. I feel like there's a lot of stimulation to be had there. And that's why I like to talk about it. And that's why I should maybe take notes in these shows, but I'm not. The vlog will always be a show with absolutely no preparation and no notes. I will say one word. I said, but today I said sports. And I said, go, Alec, go. Go forth. Go forth and fucking get after it and run people away from you. And that's what I've done. Uh, except Lawman subscribed, so that's fucking awesome. And I will never be upset at him ever again for that. I'm going to try to do a vlog every day this week. Uh, I'm going to try to mix up the topics, really just get random with it, see what happens, see where it goes. But this is the end of, uh, this is, I don't know, the end of sport. Sports are good. I don't know what this was fucking running up to or concluding to. That was just me rambling about sports for a little more than a half hour. So if you're listening on the audio version, I love you. Goodbye. Uh, message on patreon.com slash m3 podcast what you want me to talk about isabel i saw some of the things you put there so i'm going to get to some of those soon Uh, anyway that's it for the audio version i love you good night